Tell me a little bit about what made you want to be a designer. I'd have to go way back until I was about 15 years old, actually. Uh, my mother was an artist, my father was an engineer. I loved making models and drawing and sketching. I, like, I was very good in math and sciences. Just kind of making a list of items at that moment in my life, I decided, well, what combines all that that I can continue to study right now and work towards, towards college? As it turns out, there's a lot of other Platt uh, architects in the family, and so it really started back then. Would you say you have kind of developed an architectural hero? I was a big fan of Frank Lloyd Wright. I think that he, uh, and in some ways, hopefully like me, um, emulate a kind of design which has a natural um, base, um, has a tectonic quality, uh, and is rooted both in nature and kind of high design and, and trying to connect it to. He's famous for his Usonian houses, which were a direct connection to nature and bring nature in. And I think every modernist house, every glass and steel box is, you know, comes from that kind of idea. Luxury for me is really not so much about product and, and, uh, and the design of it, but more about creating a quality of space and time for the clients that we work with. And so for me, luxury is really time and the time to be able to enjoy that. We start day one with working on the architecture at the same moment that we work on the interiors. And so at the end of the day, there's been a, you know, a series of long conversations internally and with the client on all aspects of the project. Uh, and it's not just about locating electrical outlet where a lamp's gonna be. It runs through the materiality, the volume, the sense of light and scale, uh, everything down to you know, the china or the art we might be buying for the client. I've had a number of clients over the years that have seen something published in Architectural Digest and say, oh, I want that. And I say, well, you know, that might be a half million dollar a room to get what you want between the wood and the stone and the steel and the custom furniture and lighting and everything. Um, I'm very careful at the beginning of a project with a client when we talk about that and I show them a lot of images of our work, other people's work, trying to put together what we call a lookbook for them. And in that process, we're also very clear about the budget. I think the days of the decorator without a budget are gone, pretty much. It's not about the price of things. It's about the style and the design that comes to them. The end result of all that we do as architects and designers is we're building for a client. We're building for an end user that's not us, right? And you always have to keep that in mind. There's a lot of ego in our business on the architecture and interior side. And you need to let go of all that ego because you're not going to live in that space. And the more you connect with the clients, and I think when you look through the work that we've done over the years, it's very different, you know, from one house to the next. Uh, could be some historic renovation, it could be some modern high-rise, they're showing the uh, Ritz-Carlton project we were working on. And in each case, I'm listening very closely to the client because as an end user, what you're trying to do is create this beautiful, oasis, this, and whether it's commercial or residential, an oasis, a place for people to have a sense of peace and calm, and to the extent that they paid for it, they should get exactly what they want.